This is alternative political analysis and this video will be on the third wave feminist ideology and I will begin this video by describing the first two waves. The first wave was in the late 19th century and early 20th century and basically they wanted the right to vote which is fair enough. This brings us on to the second wave which came about in the 60s and it focused on domestic violence, marital rape, and it was pro-abortion, which I obviously disagree with being pro-life. And this br brings us on to Title IX. And there's nothing wrong with education amendments, but the way the Office for Civil Rights interprets it and implements it, it is sexist against male athletes and it is analogous for the office for civil rights wrong interpretation of civil rights laws not protecting white people from racism and the case for this was the philadelphia new black panther inciting genocide against white people eric holder as attorney general chose not to prosecute the case and back to second wave feminism and this is where the sexist discrimination against males and in institutions began. The Mississippi University for Women case. And this brings us on to the cesspit that is the third wave feminist ideology. It started in the 1990s. And it focuses on intersectionality, which is about overlapping identities and critical race theory and if you're unfamiliar with that term it's basically anti-caucasian racism and this is where the power privilege excrement comes from and i'll explain to you why this is bovine excrement so basically a gender queer disabled upper class floor is less privileged than a homeless able bodied white man. Now if you can't see where the bigotry and hate is in that then I, I don't want to bother explaining to you because you wouldn't appreciate the facts, the discernible reality or objective truth even if I give the most articulate and eloquent and informative explanation and the people and the person who coined this was Kimberly Williams Crenshaw and as I explained just there now it is social justice warrior bovine excrement it is bovine feces there is no doubt about it and it goes back to this new left thing which is basically the old right wing disguising itself as left wing when it's clear to anyone with a brain or any socialist and tendencies that these people have no interest in helping the working class and another um, principle and theory of the third wave feminist movement is patriarchy this is brilliant all men always benefit from the oppression of all women more bovine excrement and 14 percent of men are involuntarily celibate compared to 10 percent of women are they always benefiting from the oppression of all women anyway the source for that last fact was Georgia University or another thing that exposes the falsehood of patriarchy is Jessica Ferranti gloating in the Guardian that young women are paid more than young men and that was article was from September 2015. Now this 
brings us on to the pay gap myth and basically all I have to do is redirect you to another video by a young lady called June with a channel called Shoe On Head and basically search for Shoe On Head and wage gap video and basically she explains that um, it is the average wage of all males versus the average wage of all women and it doesn't take into account job position, hours worked or different fields of work. So basically it does not compare like for like apples with apples, oranges with oranges. So there is no sexist discrimination and thus principle of equal pay for equal work is not affected be explained any more simple than that and this brings us on to um, more excrement Catherine McKinnon all heterosexual sex is rape so basically every person in the world was brought into existence by rape okay that's just nonsense and basically this brings us on to the assertion from many feminists on Tumblr and other cesspits on the internet that sex with husband is marital rape. However, cheating is empowerment. Yeah, that's a healthy and helpful movement for society and this um, article in a New York publication and it's written by a cuckold whose marriage is open for his wife but not for him and uh, that was written in July 2015 And there was an independent article which promoted the same view inside the world of cuckolding, it was titled, and that was December of 2016. <coughs> and there was also the article from Cassidy Boone, who is basically a misandrist bigot if you're not familiar with her who wrote an article, Girls Gotta Cheat. And this isn't the only hateful um, principle that this horrible movement has. Everyday feminist, black only spaces. This is racist bigotry and segregationism. But it wasn't just the everyday feminist. The Guardian, Huffington Post, The Feminist Wire and The College Fix all articulated the same segregationist view. And The Sun Sentinel thinks it's okay for men to pay alimony but it is against women paying alimony. And for your information, men pay 97% of alimony. And there, that was, there was this thing about male victims by feminist current. Karen and Gala Smith and it justified domestic violence against men claimed women don't exaggerate or make false allegations that is unbelievable and to prove how ridiculous that is 
The Guardian reported that 109 women were prosecuted for false rape claims between 2009 and 2014. What women don't exaggerate or make false allegations? That's I'm not done. The Huffington Post. 70% of allegations of domestic violence against men in custody disputes are false. Again, women don't exaggerate or make false allegations. And this brings us on to the topic of paternity fraud. You, you know, um, when a lady, or a woman I should say, um, sleeps with another man and tells another man that the child is his and the consequence is basically that man is paying for and or raising a child which isn't his. And using the information from Dr. Charles E. Curry, I will give you the statistics on this horrible aspect of society. 30% of DNA tests um, prove the man being tested is not the father. And there are 300,000 DNA tests in America annually. And this leads to 90,000 non fathers. Um, being made to pay child support in America every year and with this number um, 90,000 times 18 because the man pays child support for as long as the child in question is a child and not an adult thus the child is dependent. So using this calculation of 90,000 times 18 that gives us the conservative estimate of 1,600,000 non fathers paying child support in America for children that aren't theirs. And using the statistic of 30% DNA test not being the father there are 4 million children born in the United States of America every year this means there are at least 1 million and 200,000 victims of paternity fraud every year in America and as many as 21 million men in America pay for children that aren't theirs. And Dr. Curry made his calculations based on data from the American Association of Milk Banks. And basically, right wing feminists think deceiving a man and making him bear the responsibility for the consequences of the women's actions is morally and socially acceptable which is why I say this horrible amendment 